India, or Bharat, is not just a nation came, coming from 1947, or a country, but it is a great civilization. In fact, I would say it is probably the greatest civilization in the world <laughs> from the standpoint of spirituality, consciousness, art, culture. It hasn't maybe developed the science and technology as quickly as other parts of the world, but it has certainly been able to adapt them uh, as well. The unfortunate thing is that many people in India and abroad see India from 1947 as that is what uh, India uh, was. So let's take a quick look at that. India is not only, we could say, in great in terms of its literature, its history, its gurus, and uh, all the wonderful traditions on various levels. India was the dominant civilization in Asia throughout most of history. And we can see this in the spread of the Indic civilization throughout Southeast Asia, Indonesia, Indochina, as far as the Philippines. Its domination spiritually of China, it spread to Japan, where you still have Vedic deities worship today, even to uh, Korea. It also had a profound influence on Central Asia, extending to West Asia, Europe, before, particularly before the Islamic period, but even to some extent uh, afterwards. And we can see in the architecture, the names of countries of these regions, India's civilizational influence which was largely, people say, a soft power influence. But I must say that India has never denied hard power. And there was hard power in the spread of India's civilization, not only in terms of trade, but movement of kings, soldiers, uh, ships, uh, tra uh, travel, and uh, all of that. So we know that vast uh, civilizational expanse uh, from India was uh, diminished and cut off during the Islamic uh, period, uh, starting from the, mainly from the 13th to the 15th centuries where it reached where Indonesia fell under uh, Islam. But the impact of that is still there. And the Indian civilization uh, survived, again, both by hard power and by soft power. In India, there was never a surrender on the battlefield. There was continual fighting that led to the arising of various Hindu Indian kingdoms, Vijayanagar, the Marathas, and so forth, all the way up to the independence uh, movement. And even though there was the great Islamic assault on India and the British, European, and Christian assault on India, India's civilization and culture survived. Its soft power, particularly, uh, survived. Then we witnessed two things in the late 19th century. Uh, the Indian independence movement began, and at the same time, uh, Swami Vivekananda began to introduce the Indian culture and civilization throughout the world and got a very wonderful, unexpected, and tremendous response, even though at that time India was under colonial rule and missionary assault and there was no real support or defense of what he was doing. The Indian independence movement was also based on India's soft power, uh, bringing back the Vedas and Arya Samaj, uh, the great emphasis on the Bhagavad Gita, Karma Yoga, Dharma, uh, Ram Raja, and we see this throughout the Indian independence movement up to 1947. But what happened in India after 1947 was a great tragedy. The mindset that achieved independence uh, was basically abandoned and the intelligentsia, the intellectuals who came to run the country were not those who believed in India or had a connection to its soft power, but were following socialist, we know the Nehruvian mentality, European uh, ideas, and so instead of Embracing and expanding India's great culture and soft power, they tried to suppress it. They created an educational system that was anti-India, anti-Bharat, uh, denigrating its own culture. And so because of that, I would say, India has the greatest soft power in the world. 
but it is not being used. It hasn't been used, and the government has not recognized it or supported it until uh, recently, even though historically it had such tremendous power. So without a revival of the soft power, then the spread of the Indian values, culture, everything is weakened. Uh, in fact, soft power supports and also to some extent precedes hard power. If you don't have any civilization, cultural values, strength, traditions, then your ability to influence the world at intellectual, cultural, and diplomatic levels becomes uh, weakened. So we see the strange phenomenon that India's soft power has spread without any government support, whether it's yoga, Ayurveda, meditation, mantra, these traditions embraced by the Western world. And many of these people don't give India credit for these traditions because they haven't been presented uh, to them in an Indian context. Uh, in fact, let me tell you a little story. Uh, we were in Italy some years ago and the Italian Hindu Union, which was able to get uh, Hinduism recognized as a legal uh, religion in uh, Italy, uh, had a gathering and they invited all the major, uh, high, what you would call high commissioners or all the major diplomats of different countries in uh, Italy to come to their inaugural event for this. And the uh, ambassador or the high commissioner from India declined to come, even though Turkey, people from France, Russia all came, because he said India is a secular country. So this idea of secularism was invented to a great extent to suppress or to deny the Indian culture and civilization. Now, even the writing of the textbooks was taken over by the Marxist, and we had ancient history Vedas uh, run by people who had no sympathy, no understanding, and no appropriate mindset. Some years ago, 15 years ago, I did a program at JNU on ancient India, Aryan invasion. And at the end, uh, we were wondering what the questions would be. It was a big audience. And there were only two questions. But the last question was very interesting. One of the students said, we accept that there was no Aryan invasion. You've given us adequate information. Uh, that is probably historically correct, but he said, however, because that information supports Hindu nationalist politics, it should be suppressed even if it's true. And I think this tells us what the mentality is. So what India has done, particularly through the media and the academia and the previous governments, is brought in the same old type of colonial Marxist missionary mentality to judge the country, to present its traditions, and even to aid in their denigration globally. But in spite of that, India's soft power has developed and spread and continues to do so. So finally, we have a government through starting with issues like Yoga Day, is able to express India's soft power and getting a wonderful respect and regard for it. The Prime Minister of Japan is happy to come to a Shiva temple and Waranasi, which previous groups and civilizations uh, uh, or administrations were unable to do.